The book of Revelation, chapter 14, verses 9 through 12. If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. We will draw our attention, writes Apostle Gadi, to the fact that what we have read is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him. And this revelation was addressed through the Apostle John to the saints of all times and generations, possessing the dignity of the servants of the Lord. That is, to all those who have an organic involvement to Jerusalem, which is called the Bride of the Lamb. We know that the mark or brand of the beast, the man of sin and the son of destruction, will be expressed in thoughts about the early or in the dominion of gold and silver over people in the equivalent of money. Again, what is the mark or brand of the beast? It is this brand as expressed in thoughts. Thoughts about what is earthly and about rulership with dominion of gold and silver over people. Based on the predictions of scripture, writes a pastor at Gadi, most of the so-called Christians, Christians in quotation marks, will sell their freedom from the power of sin for the opportunity to build up the money supply on their accounts. At the same time, a reservation should be made that the ability to increase the money supply on our accounts in itself is not a sin. The wrong attitude towards money is a sin. What is an incorrect relationship toward money and what is a correct relationship toward money? The correct attitude or relationship towards money is determined by domination over money and the wrong attitude to money is the domination of money over us. Either we rule over money or money rules over us. So who has rulership over who? The very same power over money can be exercised in only one way. To voluntarily honor God with tithes and offerings from everything that we acquire before taxes are deducted from it. In the beginning, we honor God and then we play Caesar, we pay Caesar taxes and we live in a Christian country and today there are different organizations that say honor the church and then whatever you have remaining after you honor God in the church from this play, pay Caesar we have a fairly Christian cu country and then even here the tax uh, the tax system also says first honor God and then what is left honor Caesar and they say, ask, why is the economy in America the, the greatest, the strongest? Well, because all of these principles lie not just in the hearts of saints, but they also find their voice in the laws of this country. And the country that honors God, and it is called a Christian. A Christian country is not called one that just looks at an icon and is baptized. It is that country that honors him and hallows him. And in order to give what is at our disposal, but belongs to God in accordance with his words, it is necessary to also earn this money in accordance with these words. Let's read what money, or as we have read, silver and money, how can we bring this to God? It turns out that not all money that it's not all money that God accepts. And whatever you do, do it heartily, as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. 
but he who does wrong will be repaid for what he has done, and there is no partiality. So here we have seen that all that we do, we must do it heartily, which means to do it as we're doing it for the Lord and not for men. Any work that we do, we do it for the Lord. At the same time, one should give tithes and offerings in the purity of the heart, with joy and not to dead religious institutions, human organizations that imitate the church, but there where you get the bread of life. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 12 through 15. When you have finished laying aside all the tithe of your increase, then you shall say before the Lord your God, I have removed the holy tithe from my house, which you have commanded me. I have not eaten any of it when in mourning, nor have I removed any of it for an unclean use, nor given any of it for the dead. I have obeyed the voice of the Lord my God and have done according to all that you have commanded me. Look down from your holy habitation from heaven and bless your people Israel. Therefore Christians who do not honor God with tithes and offerings or do not give them in accordance with the requirements of scripture, even if unconsciously, they already worship the beast and his image. Again, who worships the beast and his image? Two categories. First, the one that totally does not honor God, and secondly, the one who either pays God or purchases God, or so-called honors God, in quotation marks, because they bring unclean money. Therefore, these two categories, they unconsciously but already worship the beast and his image. Whenever a person stops honoring God with tithes and offerings in his congregation, no matter what the reasons he justifies, he turns his back on God. So, meaning he leaves church. He might sit at church at every single service, but he has stopped honoring God with tithes and offerings, means he's already left. He's already left. He's not here. He turned his back and he's long ago left that day where he stopped honoring God with tithes and offerings. He left the church. Malachi 3 7 through 10. Yet from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, In what way shall we return? This was a question uh, of Israel. We have never turned to you, our back to you. How do we return then to you? He says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Therefore, we right now are going to sing a psalm and thank God that today we again have heard about how to earn money, who to give, how to give this money, how to honor God, and what should be our correct relationship to money because the marker brand of the beast is defined, as we heard, based on when we think about what is earthly. We might we might imitate that we are thinking about what is heavenly. We might talk about religious topics. Then the Lord looks at our hands. Well, we can't hide our hands because when you begin to speak, we begin to move our hands and He looks at our hands. If these hands do not honor God with tithes and offerings, then we might try to hide our mark that is on our foreheads. But when our hands begin to show themselves, the Lord knows immediately who He has who he deals with. You can't hide either the forehead or the hands simultaneously. The Lord can easily define this, but praise the, praise the fact that we have the seal of God on our foreheads, and we will dedicate our hands in service to God. Let us please stand and sing to the Lord of Psalm. Забудьтеся земло, лучше в небо посмотрите, Только там вы свет узрите, не заботьтесь о земно. Мы не подноги себе, где все прозимно в отрене. Посмотрите лучше в небо, там узрите вечный дом. Oh, 
Ничего секрета Остается чудо это Что хранится у небесного Отца А пока еще секрета Остается чудо это Что хранится у небесного Отца Заботьтесь о земном, что носить и чем питаться, Лучше духом исполняться. Не заботьтесь о земном, наши нужды знает Бог, По сердцам нам воздается, пусть мало к Отцу несется, Что ведет нас вечный дом. Again, with great joy, repeat after Pastor Arkadi that each time the people of Israel had honored God with tithes and offerings in their tabernacle of Moses or the Temple of Solomon, they were called to according to the words of Moses, which he had received as a revelation from God on the mountain, to raise their hands over their offerings and to proclaim one proclamation that they were faithful to for thousands of years. We, being that same Israel tied to that same root, drinking from the same olive tree, will do the same thing. Please raise your right hand, a symbol of your righteous act, and please pray together with me. 
Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I have separated the tithes from my home and have brought them into your home so that your home may have food. I did not give impurely, I did not give in sorrow, and I did not give for the dead. I deeply believe in your unchanging word, and I'm glad that I have the privilege to express my love and to acknowledge your authority. And now, according to your word, I pray that your heavenly windows be opened, and may your blessing come down abundantly upon your redeemed nation. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. May you be blessed. Please be seated. <laughs> 